we are going to cover the March June 2016 sample questions from the financial reporting F7 now called FRACCA. The purpose of this um, session is for us to revise question number three together and I will be sharing you with the exam tips and the approach on how to answer such questions in an exam in a real examination setup. So this was uh, the March June 2016 sample question, question number three, down in. So let's go to the requirements. Required prepare the statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income for downing for call for the year ended 31 March 2016. Prepare the statement of changes in equity for downing call for the year ended 31 March 2016. C prepare the statement of financial position of downing call as at 31 March 2016. This is for 25 marks, those three requirements. We are not going to cover part D together today. So I have ran ahead and uh, compiled and prepared the template where we'll be answering this question. So if you don't have this question, please pause now and download this question from the ACCA website or you just quickly search it so that at least we will be able to follow along the video. Now let's go to the question. We are given the equity shares, other equity, retained earnings, 5% convertible loan, land and buildings, plant and equipment, patent, accumulated depreciation, stroke amortization. We've got inventory, trade receivables, bank, current tax, deferred tax, revenue, cost of sales, distribution cost, administrative expenses, contract asset, loan not interest paid, bank interest, other income from royalties, trade payables. The approach that we will be using, we will be working everything that is on the additional notes. After working everything that is on the additional notes, then that's the time where we are going to look at the required and um, answer the relevant questions. Now, note number one, revenue. The figure for revenue is 267,900. Revenue includes an amount of 16 million, which is 16,000 in thousand, for a sale made on 1 April. That is the beginning of the year. The sale relates to a single product and includes ongoing servicing from Downing Co. for four years. The normal selling price for the product and the servicing will be 18 million and 500,000 per annum, which is 2 million in total, respectively. That's only, only the information that we're given. So it means if this uh, sale was made at a discount, because the normal price is 18 million plus 2 million, which is 20 million, but it was uh, made for only 16 million. But all this 16 million must not be re recognized in a single year as the servicing costs are for four years. So in this particular instance or in this particular year, we are only going to recognize one year's servicing costs or servicing charges, not the whole four years servicing charge. <coughs> Sorry about that. Now, sales before discount the sales normally they are for 18 million the servicing normally is for 2 million then if we sum up everything we get 20 million now this 20 million we need to apportion this 16 million between sales and servicing so let's type it here our 16 million so what we'll simply say, we'll simply say 18 million divided by 20 million multiplied by 16 million. Then the servicing will simply say again 2 million divided by 20 million multiplied by 16 million like that. So we have split the 16 into sales and servicing. But the servicing is for four years. 
the sale was made at the beginning of the year so we need to recognize one year of the service as 1.6 is for four years so we'll say 1.6 divided by four so we need to recognize only 400 so how much sales were supposed to be recognized the recorded sales is 16 million but what we need to recognize this year is the sales of 1.4 plus the servicing of only one year is 16 plus the servicing of one year of which is 400 like that so this year the sales that were supposed to be recognized was 14,800 but they included all the 16 so the difference should be deferred because it's the servicing for the next three years so the 1.2 has to be deferred income or deferred revenue but the 1.2 is for three years so if it's for three years the next next year we are going to recognize 400 and next off another 400 and the last year another 400 so what does it mean the 400 becomes a current liability and the 800 becomes nanny current liability we are going to see that when we are preparing the statement of financial position but at the present moment this deferred income as all of it was included here at 16 so we need to reverse the 1.2 by debiting revenue by 1.2 and crediting the deferred income by 1.2 as I said, this 1.2 deferred income, we're going to split it into current and non-current. We are done with that note. Now let's go to note number two. The, the contract asset is comprised. Let's go and look at the contract asset. This is 5 million that we are looking here, 5,000. The contract asset is comprised of contract costs incurred at 31 March 2016 of 15 million less a payment of 10 million from the customer. The agreed transaction price for the total contract is 30 million and the total estimated costs are 24 million. Downing Co. uses an input method based on costs incurred to date relative to the total expected costs to determine the progress towards completion of its uh, contract. So Downing Co. uses the cost to date over total cost to find the percentage of completion. So we can simply say here, total cost is 15,000 or 15 million divided by 24, which is total cost. So the, the percentage completion is 62.5. Now the total contract price is 30 million. The to expected total costs are 24 million. We need to to find whether this contract is profitable or not if it's profitable we will split the profit between the periods but if it's loss making we we'll recognize the whole loss in the current period now cost to date we have got 15 million like that <clears throat> then the how much should we recognize as revenue the total revenue is 30 we only need to recognize 62.5 percent like that so we recognize 18,350 then the current profit will be 18 minus 15 which is 3,750 now when it comes to the statement of our uh, profit or loss we are going to include this price this revenue contract revenue and also this contract cost as cost of sales now let's find the data how much this is not the data the contract asset this contract asset is wrong how much should be the contract asset the contract asset should be our revenue less what was paid to us which is 8750 you can also calculate it this way you can simply say cost to date plus profit less payment received we get the same price as 8750 like that we are done with that note 
This 8,750 will affect our current assets. So now let's go to note number three. Note number three, it's a convertible loan. Please take note in each and every question of uh, the statement of profit or loss and also the statement of financial position. Please take note of the convertible loan as uh, the examiner likes examining the convertible loan. So we've got three years, 2016, 2017, 2018, like that. The cash flow is at nominal, which is 5%, multiplied by the loan amount. Let's go check here, 30,000, of which is this one. So 5% of 30,000, we get what? 1,150. So we are going to be paying loan interest of um, 1,500 for every year. And at the end of the year, we are going to pay the 30,000 principal here. Now, which discount rate should be used? We should use the discount rate of the loan note without the conversion cost, the conversion option, which is 8%. So we copy the discount factors for the loan without the conversion cost. Then we say, Cash flow multiplied by the discount factor. Cash flow multiplied by the discount factor. Cash flow multiplied by the discount factor. When we sum up, we get the liability component of this convertible loan. Then we need to find the equity component of this convertible loan. We will simply say 30,000 less <coughs> the liability component. So the equity component becomes uh, 2,430. This is our right or option to convert. But to, let's continue with the 27,570. The, the liability component is at 1 April. That was the beginning of the year, 2015. We need to add on top of that the finance costs of 8%. So we simply say this multiplied by 8%. We get our finance cost. Then we need to list the interest payment. The interest payment is paid at nominal. We have already calculated the interest payment is 1,500. Then when we sum here, we should get the balance as at 31 March 2016, like that. So we are done with the loan. We will use this 28 as our non-current asset. We will use this 2,206 as our finance cost. We will also use the 2,430 as our right to convert all other components of equity. We are done with that note. Now let's go to note number four. It's a big note on non-current assets. I hope you have read the note. The asset was revalued at the beginning of the year. So... Let's get the carrying amounts at the beginning of the year. The carrying amount of land still 14 million as land is not uh, does not depreciate. So we we'll simply say for the the building portion, we we'll simply say the cost less the cost for the land less the accumulated depreciation of five thousand. We get forty five as the carrying amount of the land. Now, we need to take into consideration the revalued amount. The revalued amount of the land is now 16 million at the beginning of the year. Of the buildings is 52,200. Now we have got again 16 minus 
14, we have a get a gain of 2,000 here and also of uh, 7,200 on buildings. But we are told that Downing's Co. intends to make a transfer from the revaluation surplus to retained earnings in, res in respect of the annual realization of the revaluation surplus, ignore deferred tax. So this 7,200 will ignore deferred tax, but we will have to amortize it. So we'll be transferring it each and every year to retain earnings. And we are told that this asset has got a, a, a useful life of 18 years. So the surplus will be amortized over 18 years. We are not going to amortize the gain on land as land is not depreciating. So this 2000 will be realized upon the sale of the land. Also, land does not depreciate, so there's no depreciation for the land. There is, however, depreciation of the buildings over 18 years like that. Then we can sum up the land still 16 million and the buildings is 49,300. Let's go to the PPE, proper plant and equipment. <coughs> the carrying amount of the plant and equipment, the cost is 82. 700 less 36 700 like that we get the carrying amount of 46 the depreciation we are told it's at um, let's get the percentage it's at 15 percent so we multiply by 15 percent like that then we sum up to get the balance at the end of the year this depreciation, we are going to use them on our cost of sales. Let's continue with our note. During the current year, the income from royalties relating to the patent had declined considerably and the directors are concerned that the value of the patent may be impaired. That's a trigger there to calculate impairment. A study at the year end concluded that the present value of future estimated net cash flows from the patent at 31 March is 3,200, 3.25 million. That one is a value in use amount. However, Downing Co. also has confirmed an offer of 3.4 million to sell the patent immediately at that date. That is the fair value less cost to sell. So first we need to calculate the carrying amount of the patent and compare the carrying amount with the recoverable amount. The recoverable amount is the higher of the fair value less cost to sell and the value in use. So let's first of all calculate the carrying amount of the patent. The cost of the patent is 7,500 less the amortization of the patent, which is 3 million like that. So it's 45. The patent should be amortized or depreciated over 10 years so we divide by 10 like that then we sum to get our carrying amount at the year end the carrying amount of the patent at the year end is 4050 then the recoverable amount how much is the recoverable amount is the higher of the value in use and the fair value less cost to sell the value in use is 3.25 million so it's 3250 like that the Fair value less cost to sell is 3400 like that. So the value in use is the higher between these two, which is 3400 Now the impairment, how much is the impairment? We say the recovery amount less the carrying amount. So the, imp the impairment... will be 650 like that now let's go to tax that is our last section the directors have uh, estimated the pro current tax to be 11400 like that 
there is a deferred tax. We are told that the temporal difference is 18,500 taxable. So we we'll simply say 18,500 multiply by the tax rate of 20% like that. We get the closing deferred tax of 3,700. But we have got the opening deferred tax of 4,800. So the deferred tax has decreased. So the movement in deferred tax now will simply say 3,000 closing less 4,800 the opening. So the deferred tax has moved down by what? 1.1. Now we take the under provision in the statement which is current tax 115 there. We add it there like that. Then when we sum up, we will get the figure for tax that we put in our statement of profit or loss. Now let's let's complete the statement. Revenue two six seven nine hundred. We said we need to subtract this debit revenue that. And also, we need to add the revenue for the contract. Then for cost of sales, here, we need to be very careful. We have got um, 166,600. We need to add the cost of sales from the contract. We need to add the depreciation of land, add depreciation of plant and equipment, add depreciation of the patent, add the impairment. We get that figure. Then when we sum up these two, we should get the gross profit. Then lessing other expenses now, we have got um, 20,000 distribution costs. We have got 22 here, which is admin. We have got income from royalties. We now we have got the finance cost. The finance cost will start with the $1.550 for the bank, for the bank um, interest. Why bank interest? Because you have got an overdraft here. Then we need to add again the finance cost that we have here for the convertible loan. We get that much. Then our tax, we calculated it here above. Then now we calculate the profit for the year. We get that figure. Then we, we take the gain on revaluation, which is 2 plus the 7 there. We get that figure. Then the total comprehensive income. We get that figure like that. Then now... Sorry, the income from royalties is only 300. Then we get that figure like that. Then we now, we have completed our statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income. Now let's go to our statement of changes in equity. We have got the 25,000 there. We have got other equity of 11,800 is starting retained earnings of 8,000. Starting revaluation surplus, we don't have anything. Profit for the year affects the retained earnings. We have got this profit for the year. And we have got uh, this revaluation there. Then the transfer. We said we are transferring it to retained earnings. We have already calculated the transfer here is 400. 
of which the 400 is coming from revaluation surplus going to the return earnings. And also, we calculated our right to convert or the option to convert up here, the other components of equity here. Then from there, we can sum up We have our figures like that. We have completed our statement of changes in equity. Now let's go to our statement of financial position. We have got our PPE. Starting with the land, we add the buildings. We add the plant and equipment. We get our PPE. Our intangible, which is the patent. The patent we have uh, impaired it to the recoverable amount. So we are taking that figure there. Then inventory. We copy the inventory figure here, 32,100. Receivables is 38,500. The contract data, we have calculated our contract data above here. Let's go. We have this contract data here. We can sum up here. We get our balance. Then for equity, we are taking our figures from our statement of changes in equity. Taking our figures straight from statement of changes in equity and putting them here. Deferred income, we say to only defer 1,200 of which 800 is um, non-current and the 400 is current to make it 1,200. Our deferred tax, we have calculated it here. When we're calculating the movement, we have calculated them here. Then the convertible loan, we have already calculated our balance for the convertible loan. Let's go and take it here, 28. Then the bank, we have got the overdraft of 2,700. Payables we are given is 46,400. Then um, current tax, we are given is 11,400. Let's go to our tax calculation and pick it from there. Then we have all the figures. We need to add them now. Boom, our statement of financial position balances. As long as you, have, you follow the principles, everything will balance and you will be happy in the examination and you will be seeing that you have conquered or passed the examination. Please, if you are new to my channel, please subscribe, like, and uh, if, you request, if you have got something that you need me to solve, you can request it under the comment section below. And also, please do not forget to share the video links with your friends. Thank you for watching.